we are looking at this argument that concludes that abortion is immoral. It is by Perry Hendricks. This is from an article published in Bioethics in 2018. There have been many responses to this argument, and Perry Hendricks has since revised it and fine-tuned it a little bit. But we're focusing on the original argument to make sure that we understand how it works. So just as an overview here, what Hendricks does is he argues that a person who knowingly gives her fetus fetal alcohol syndrome has acted immorally. So it seems like that would be broadly accepted, that that would be something that is immoral for someone to knowingly do that. And that fact, when conjoined with the impairment principle, which we'll explain in a bit, of course, leads to the conclusion that having an abortion is immoral. Now, a key feature of this argument is that Hendricks does not claim that the fetus is a person. In fact, he, uh, for the sake of the argument, he grants that the fetus is not a person just to avoid those controversial concerns, A, about what a person is, and B, about whether or not a fetus meets those criteria for being a person. So Hendricks puts those concerns to the side. Okay, so in order to understand the argument, we need to think a little bit about fetal alcohol syndrome. Alcohol is a teratogen, and what that means is it causes various abnormalities, um, intellectual abilities sometimes, learning disabilities. When a pregnant woman drinks excessively, these things can occur, and in fact, are likely to occur. So suppose uh, there is a child with fetal alcohol syndrome, and suppose this child at 12 years old is so affected uh, that she has difficulty or even a lack of an ability to do basic math like counting or single digit addition or the ability to tell time, all of those things at age 12. Uh, that is sometimes the result of fetal alcohol syndrome. Um, suppose that the child also was born to a mother who drank excessively while pregnant and knew that this was very likely to cause fetal alcohol syndrome. She knew what the kinds of uh, possible impairments might be, and yet she continued to drink excessively anyway. So we're, we're, our situation is she knows that it's very likely that this kind of situation was going to result and yet she continued to drink excessively while pregnant. So the mother has acted immorally in giving the child fetal alcohol syndrome. That seems like something that uh, people would agree on. In other words, she's wronged the child by knowing, knowingly and significantly impairing the child. So, uh, just, you know, to, to clarify this, to give a fetus fetal alcohol syndrome knowing is immoral at the time of the consumption of the alcohol. It does not somehow become retroactively immoral once those uh, impairments become more obvious later on in the child's life. It is immoral at the time of the consumption of the alcohol. So from here, Hendricks describes the impairment principle. And it's a fairly straightforward principle. The idea is that if it's immoral to impair an organism, O, again, we're not assuming personhood here, just an organism, to the nth degree, then ceteris paribus, uh, all things being equal, it's Im immoral to impair O to the N plus one degree. And to impair 
O to the n plus one degree is to make some present impairments more severe, to, to worsen the impairments that are already there, or to add one or more additional impairments to the organism. So for example, we would uh, presumably all agree that it would be immoral to uh, cut off a dog's rear right leg for no uh, medical purpose, for no benefit for the dog, right? So you have impaired the dog. Well, if that's the case, the impairment principle says, then it would also be immoral to take that dog and cut off the remaining rear leg. Uh, th that's the application, how it would work in that kind of a situation. Okay, second premise, if causing an organism O to have fetal alcohol syndrome is immoral, which seems to be the case, according to Hendricks, then Ceteris Paribus, killing O is immoral. Why? Because killing O is to impair her more than giving her fetal alcohol syndrome because killing O is to completely limit all of her abilities. So impairment to the max, you might say, maximal impairment. Okay, if we put this all together, we have the brief argument, the impairment argument. It starts with our claim that we've discussed causing an organism O to have fetal alcohol syndrome is immoral. So we've talked through why that's the case. Hendricks is given reasons to think that that's the case. And if causing O to have fetal alcohol syndrome is immoral, then Ceteris Paribus, killing O is immoral because that's a greater impairment. So we're using our uh, impairment principle there to get to that premise. And you put those two together and we have killing O is immoral, that follows directly just by valid deductive reasoning. And if one aborts O, then she kills O, that's known outcome of the abortion process. Therefore to abort O is immoral. So like I said, this is Hendrick's initial argument that he published in Bioethics. There have been uh, many responses and discussions regarding the argument. Uh, but that's the initial argument by Hendricks.